Hi, welcome to another example in my series on geometric series or geometric sequences. What we've got here is a typical kind of question that you could find about consecutive terms. We've got if 2x plus 5, 6x minus 10 and 8x plus 20 are consecutive terms in a geometric series, find the possible values of x and the corresponding terms. Now, we don't know what terms these are. We don't know whether they're first, second, third term. They could be the seventh, eighth, ninth term in the series or sequence. So how are we going to find out what x is? Well, when you get problems on consecutive terms, you've got to work something like this. I mean, let's just imagine that we have got some consecutive terms in a sequence. We've got one, two, three, say, terms, whatever. And then we've come across a number like, say, uh, 5. And the next number is 15. And the next number is 45. And then the sequence carries on. Clearly here, we're multiplying each term by 3. So it's a geometric sequence. Now there's a relationship that always exists between consecutive terms. That is, if I took the 15 and I divided it by the 5, I'd get 3, the multiplying factor, the common ratio. And it's exactly the same if you take 45 and you divide that by the preceding term, 15. 45 divided by 15 also comes to 3. So these two are equal and they equal that common ratio of 3. All right? And it's this idea that we use. So what we can say is that if these are our three consecutive terms, then 6x minus 10 divided by the previous term, which is 2x plus 5, would give us the common ratio, whatever it is. But that common ratio is going to also be 8x plus 20 divided by the previous term to that, which was 6x minus 10. So we've got an equation here that we should be able to solve for x. OK, let's go about solving it then. So we need to get rid of the 2x plus 5, which would mean we'd need to multiply both sides by 2x plus 5, and we'd need to cancel out the 6x minus 10, so we'd need to multiply both sides by 6x minus 10. And if we do that, we'll end up with 6x minus 10 times another 6x minus 10, that's that one, equals, and then we'd have 2x plus 5 multiplied by... 8x plus 20. So if we expand the brackets now, we've got 6x times 6x, that's 36x squared. 6x times minus 10 is minus 6x, 60x, and we've got another minus 60x, that's minus 120x. And then minus 10 times minus 10 is plus 100, and that equals 2x times 8x, which is 16x squared. 2x times 20 is 40x, and we've got 5 times 8x, which is another 40x. So we've got a total of 80x. And finally, 5 times the plus 20 there is plus 100. So we've got a quadratic equation now, which we need to make equal to 0. So we take away 16x squared from both sides. So 36x squared takes 16x squared is... 20x squared, and then minus 120x, minus an 80x here, would be minus 200x, and then next we take 100 from both sides. Well, they'll cancel out, and that leaves me with 0. Now we just need to factorise this, so we could put out 20x as a common factor, and that would leave us with another x, minus 10, and it would equal 0. So, we have three factors now, 20 times x times x minus 10 equals 0. 20 can't be equal to 0, so it must be either x equals 0, or we have the x minus 10 that equals 0. 
So we've got x equals 0 and if we add 10 to both sides here x equals 10. So we've got two values of x. It said find the possible values of x so we can see we're expecting more than 1. Now we've just got to go on and find the corresponding term. So when it comes to the corresponding terms we just need to put x is 0 and x is 10 back into these three terms. So when x is 0, okay, what are those terms? The terms are, well we've got 5 here, the second term would be minus 10, it's not necessarily the second term, it's just the next consecutive term I should say, and when I put 0 into here we're going to get 20. So they're not necessarily the first, second and third term, they're the three consecutive terms. Now we've got when x equals the 10, what are the terms going to be this time? So we have, when x is 10 we've got 20 plus 5, that's 25, and then 10 here, 6 tens are 60, minus 10 is 50, and that last term is going to be 80 plus 20, which is 100. And you can see that these terms form part of a geometric series or sequence because in this case we're multiplying by minus 2 to each term, that's the common ratio, and in this one we're multiplying by 2. Okay, well, as I say, I hope that's given you an idea of how to handle consecutive terms, and uh, that brings us to the end of this example.